Whether you've played 10 hours or 100 hours, there's always something new to learn in Space Engineers. Over my time playing, I've learned lots of things that have absolutely blown my mind and changed the way I play the game. From the build planner to merging large and small grids together, to quite simply never pressing a certain button on my keyboard, there's so many things I've learned to improve the way I play. So, without further ado, here's my collection of ultimate tips and tricks for Space Engineers. Let's be honest, the inventory system in Space Engineers is very clunky, and I would say it's probably one of the biggest barriers to entry for new players getting into the game. It also gives me great pain when I see people looking through cargo containers looking for each component needed to weld up a block, when there's a much easier way of doing it. There's a number of shortcuts you can use to easily get components you need to weld up blocks, and there's also shortcuts to empty your inventory of components when you are finished. So the most important part of the inventory shortcuts I'm about to talk about involve the build planner. If I press 9, place down this battery, and then with my welder I right click, you'll see at the bottom it says components added to build planner. If I press G, you can see over here I've got the build planner and all the components of the battery are in it. Additionally, if you middle click on any block, you can add it to the build planner, for example this light armor block, or I can drag it over to add it to there, and then I can right click to remove them. If I go over to any inventory face and middle click, it will pull out all the resources it can from the build planner, and then I can keep doing that until I've welded up this block. Now we've hit a slight issue, I can't withdraw 20 power cells as I currently don't have them in my cargo system. Now I could be boring and just queue up 20 power cells, or if I press shift middle click, it will automatically add them to the production queue. And now that I'm done, I can middle click to withdraw them. And there you go, our battery is complete. If I were to add an order detector to the queue, I could then shift middle click and queue up all the components required for the entire block. So if you wanted to make sure you had the components for a block before you built it, this would be the best way to do it. You also don't have to use the build planner. If I have this light armor block in my hand and I middle click, each middle click will pull out all the components for the block. So there you go, I withdrew 175 steel plates, which is exactly enough for seven blocks. However, if I no longer need those steel plates, I can press alt and middle click to deposit all those components back into the cargo system. Now there are other shortcuts you can use to make the inventory system much easier to use, but these are the best ones to get started with. For years I played the game constantly replacing which items were on my toolbar. I would waste so much time deliberating which tools or blocks I needed the least on my toolbar and then minutes later I'd realise I'd need them again. To my horror I learned recently that you can have multiple toolbars, nine of them in fact, and each of them can have nine items on them. Now I organise my toolbars based on categories, all of my tools on the first one, armour blocks on the second and emotes on number nine or ten. That is when I remember as my muscle memory for this isn't quite there yet and I'm still guilty of replacing things I do need. So here I am lining up my rover and now I'm going to turn on the handbrake for pressing Stop right there criminal scum! Okay, don't press B. I mean it. Don't press it. Don't start a bad habit, just don't do it. Pressing P on PC is the button for switching the lock on your handbrake, connectors and landing gear. I will tell you what the button is on Xbox but the wiki doesn't tell me so I have absolutely no idea. Whilst pressing P for parking is a nice shortcut, getting into the habit of doing it can be really, really bad because it switches the lock on your handbrake and all your connectors and all your landing gear at the same time. That means if you have a ship or a rover with lots of connected ships, every time you park and unpark, they all fall off. So unless you want to be rebuilding all your mining ships all the time, or in a worst case, the interior of your hangar, don't press P. I've just realised that I've recorded most of this video and I haven't actually shown you what to do instead of pressing P. If you get into the cockpit of your ship and press G, you can then find your cockpit in the list, drag it onto your toolbar, and one of the options you'll have is handbrake on and off. Instead of pressing P, you can now press 1 to turn your handbrake on and off. The same can be done for doing switch lock on connectors, and switch lock for landing gears. Obviously you can choose from the list of other settings here, for example if you just want to have a dedicated lock and unlock button, you could do that for connectors and landing gear, but for the handbrake for the wheels you've only got to toggle on and off. Whilst we're on the topic of rovers, just a quick tip, if you hold X on PC or left bumper and X on Xbox, it lowers the suspension to the lowest it can be, and then when you release, you do a comically large jump. This is very useful for getting your rover unstuck, avoiding obstacles, or freaking out all your passengers as you jump off the edge of a cliff. Are you enjoying the video so far? There's more tips to come, but in the meantime, give this video a like if you're enjoying it and subscribe for more Space Engineers content. Also, if you're interested, we're hosting a Space Engineers multiplayer server on my Discord over the summer. You can find the link to my Discord in the description for more info. I'm not a big fan of the two grid system in Space Engineers. I get why it's there in principle, but I'd really like to detail my large ships with small blocks. Now, whilst it's not perfect, there is a really easy way to merge small grids and large grids together. Large and small rotors can be merged with small and large rotor heads to bridge the gap between grid types. You can also merge large grid hinges with small grid ones, and whilst it looks like it won't work, I promise you it does. 
The way you do this for both the rotors and the hinge is by placing the base of them and then removing the head. Then place a separate rotor or hinge head and then use your ship or something to move it into place. Once aligned, go to the menu for your rotor or hinge and press attach. Congratulations, you've now merged a small and large grid together. There is also an easier way to do this exclusively for large grid rotors. Once you've removed the head, you simply need to go to its terminal and click add small head. I've mainly seen this used for building custom turrets on large grids, but in theory, this could be used for anything you can imagine. Ah. Hand tools. Every time I use them, I think, man, I really should build a ship that does this. And then I go back to using them. When using hand tools, there's a couple of things you can do to make your life easier. For starters, if you double left click or right trigger on Xbox with a grinder, welder, or drill in your hand, it will toggle the tool on. No need to keep holding the button. You can just point in a direction and the tool will do its job. Please give those poor finger muscles a rest. When you're done, just click again and it's set back to normal. Additionally, with both hand drills and ship drills, if you hold right click or double right click to toggle, as I just explained, your drills will mine in a wider area than usual, but with the downside of not gathering any resources like stone or ore. This can be very useful for clearing terrain for bases or tunnels, or if you don't want to pick up any stone when you're mining underground for ore. This one is only really an issue when you're playing multiplayer, but considering it happens every single goddamn time I play multiplayer, it's probably a good thing that I bring it up. When you have a base and you dock your ships to that base, power is shared between the base and your ship. This means if you have any kind of power generation on your ships, be it batteries, reactor or engines, that power is also at your base's disposal. This means that batteries on your ship might not actually be charging and instead they could be powering the 200 lights on your base or worse, they could be charging other batteries on the base or other ships. This could mean that your ship could end up with less charge than when you docked it. However, this isn't even the worst offender. You see, the hydrogen engine exists and it is the bane of my existence. Never have I hated a virtual inanimate object more. You see, when you're docked, the hydrogen engine will continue to generate energy to power your base, thus wasting all of your hydrogen needlessly. The number of times I've seen this happen in multiplayer servers pains me. Logging on for the day to find out that we have no hydrogen left in our base and all of our hydrogen ships don't work for the fourth day in a row. Please, 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 please. When your ships are docked to the base, turn off the power generators and set your batteries to recharge. You will save yourself so much time and resources. And more importantly, it will stop the slow erosion of my remaining sanity. Whilst on the subject of connecting to your base, do you ever find it really difficult to connect and disconnect from your connectors? That when you're trying to leave the base, the connector magnetizes you back. Or that when you're trying to connect, you're sucked towards the base so violently that you break your connector and proceed to sit there and cry for five minutes. Just me? You can super easily fix this by configuring the strength of your connectors either by reducing it or removing it entirely. Now connecting is a breeze, or at least slightly less of a hassle than before. Groups. You need to use them, but not only that, you need to name them properly. I'd hope that I don't have to show you how to group blocks, but if you don't know, just select the blocks on the left and then you can name them over here. But stop, what are, you, what are you doing? You can't just call a group batteries. What kind of sacrilege is this? When you dock your ships to a station or a ship, the groups for the ship become available on both grids. The reason this is important is if you have two groups with the same name, they get merged together. For example, the last time we played multiplayer, we had one person whose ship had the group the same name as the group on the base. And what would happen was when he disconnected from the base, he would toggle on all his batteries and toggle off all the batteries on the base, leaving us without power and more importantly, killing everyone in the cryopods. Fixing this is as simple as adding the name of your ship to the beginning of all your groups, and now all of those problems can be avoided. Whilst we're on the topic of groups, did you know that you can hide blocks in the terminal, allowing you to declutter the list of blocks on your grid? Tell me honestly, do you really need all of those thrusters in that list? Or each individual battery when you could set them all to recharge from a group? Hiding them from your terminal means that only the blocks and groups you need to interact with are there in the list. And also, it really confuses your friends when they try and use your ships. Did you know any of these tips and tricks? Maybe you knew all of them. Let me know with a comment. And if you have any hot space in his tips you'd like to share with the community, let me know below.